Hi, my name is Kane Hills, and today we're going to be doing Code.org Unit 8, Lesson 3, Create a PT. So even before we look at Lesson 3, in Lesson 1, they have some task instructions and scoring guidelines. We're just going to look at the task instructions because that will have the requirements that we need to meet for the programming project. Lesson 3, or Part 1 of Lesson 3, in Unit 8, there are the task instructions right here. If you click that, it will take you to the submission requirements. So in your program code, you need to have input from either a user, a device, an online data stream, or a file. You need to use at least one list to represent a collection of data. We need to make sure that we have at least one procedure or function that contributes to the program intended purpose, which basically means make sure you define your related functions, make sure it has a return value, make sure it has one or more parameters. We also need to make sure our, our code has some sort of sequencing, selection, and iteration, which basically means sequencing means it has to be in order, selection means you have to have an if statement, and iteration means that you have to have some for loops. Make sure we have calls to our function, and also make sure we have instructions for output based on the input and the functionality. So if you're going to submit your PT or your performance task on College Board's website, in part two of lesson three, you have to create your AP digital portfolio on College Board's website. The instructions are here. Make sure you also create your written responses and make sure that you code your program and then make a PDF of your program code. Some instructions are listed here as well. And you also have to finally create a video of how your program works. So if you're submitting your, your, your projects on College Board, you have to do these additional steps. But if not, then you can just head on over to part three of lesson three to do the coding. So we're gonna go to the design tab. And well, actually first, let's go to the data tab. What I'm going to be doing is the US incarcerated population. So I'm going to look for US incarcerated population. It's under miscellaneous category. Click on that, import, and let's just take a look at the columns. So we have the state or region. We also have the number of adults in correctional facilities, and it's split up by race. So we have white adults, black or African American adults, American Indian, Asian, Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, and we also have Hispanic. Go to the design tab. Now that we have our data, Kind of understand what the data is doing and what we want to what we want to grab from it let's go to the design tab and we're going to create our design so i'm going to have a, a label it's going to be our title i'm going to call it us incarcerated population I'm going to do it by state and by race. So let's make that a little bit wider. Drag this over, align it in the center, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm also going to change my theme. Maybe let's use citrus, sure. Let's make it a little bit bigger, okay. All right, so now we're going to add in some options for users to, to choose, right? So I want two drop downs. I want one for state, and I'm gonna call this state choice. Oh. And I'm gonna duplicate this. Oops, I did something wrong. All right, let's try that again. Even though I think it might be there somewhere. I'm gonna call this one race choice. And then I also have to put some sort of label to make sure the user knows what I'm trying to um, get from them. So I want them to choose a state or region. 
I'm also going to put this in the center. Let's make it a little bit wider. And this is going to be stay label. And I'm going to duplicate this. Let's duplicate this. And then I'm going to say this is going to be the race label. And I'm going to say choose a race. All right, I think that looks good. And then I'm also going to have a text area here where I'm, this is basically going to be my output. So I'm going to give it the ID of output and I'm going to leave it blank. So I think citrus is good or maybe watermelon. Yeah, let's do watermelon. Okay. So for our options, we have to get the states and add them in here. And we also have to get the races. So if I look at the data tab, oops. If I look at the data tab here, there are 53 different states or regions. I don't want to type each one of those out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export as a CSV and I'm going to go over to Google Sheets. I'm going to go to File Open and I'm going to do Upload and select a file and I'm going to go to Download and CSV. Hopefully this will work. Great. So now I have all of the, the data from the data set from code.org. I have them here in this file. So what I'm going to do is just copy all of these states. Let's copy this. Go back over to code.org. Go to design. Go to my drop down, my state choice drop down. I'm going to paste them here. All right. Okay, great. I leave a space up here so that this stays empty for now. Okay, so that's why I put a space right here. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for race. It's just that race is a little bit different because I can't simply copy and paste the race from here. The races are listed in the column, so I'm really just going to have to like copy and paste them one by one. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have a space that I'm going to do all races or let's just do all. And then we have white, we have black or African American. We have Asian native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander. We have Hispanic or Latino. And I think that is it for the individual races. So we'll go back over here and paste it. Okay, so if I go to Let's make sure I have my output set correctly. Okay, great. So if I go to my code tab and let's say I run this, when I hit the drop down, I should see all of the races. And then when I hit the states or region, I should see all of the states or regions, which looks great. Perfect. So now we're ready to code, but I'm just going to head back to my design tab just to make sure that everything has an appropriate ID. So I'm going to call this the title. This is going to be my state label, my state choice, race label, race choice, and my output. So now I know that all of my additions to my design, they all have an appropriate ID, appropriately named ID. So now we can get to coding. So the first thing that we're going to do, of course, is to declare 
our variables. And the variables that we're going to work with are going to be the state and region, as we have here, and also the different races. So I'm going to do var state or region. I'm just going to have that be empty for now. And I'm going to do var total which is gonna be the total population overall, regardless of race. Then I'm gonna have var, let's say blacks, or maybe I should say black race. Var white race. Ugh. Let's just do, let's just do it simple. For blacks, for whites, for Indians. We'll do Asians. We'll do Pacifics. And we'll also do Hispanics. All right, so I'm going to go to show blocks and then in here, I'm going to go to the data in the toolbox and I want to change this to be the table that I'm looking at and the appropriate column. So state or region for state or region and then total. Oh. And then this will be for the black race, black or African Americans, this one will be for white, this one will be for Indian or a native Alaska native This one will be for Asians Now we're just using the shortened form of these variables just to make it easier So we're not ending up retyping super long variable names, but we still want the variable names to be descriptive, right? Pacific This one and then Hispanic. Okay, great. So I think we have everything that we need. Now we're just going to think about how we want to code this, right? So I'm gonna to go to show text so I can add some comments. This yellow triangle means that we've defined our variables but we haven't called it yet, which means we haven't used it yet. We've just created it. So what we're going to do is just kind of think about how we want to code this. So we want to make sure we have our on events, right? What happens when users hit that drop down? And then I do plan on using a filter function and an update screen function. That's going to be our basic setup because I do plan on using the list filter pattern that we've learned in previous units. So we're going to go ahead and start with the on event, but I'm only going to do state choice for now, and then we'll do the race choice. So I'm going to start with state choice, and then later on we'll do race choice. So when someone clicks on any of the drop downs here, Go to show blocks. I'm going to go to UI controls, drag over the on event, and this will be the state choice. So when someone hits the drop down, so it's not really a click, it's more of an input. Then I want something to happen, right? So let me go to show text. And just to test this out, I'm going to say print. Oh. 
console.log state choice just to see if it works let's run it and here's the console.log with our output great so we know that when someone changes the input something will print All right every time I change the input something is printing so that's how we, we guarantee that the input selection is working. So now what I want to do here, I'm going to reset this. I'm going to create a filter function and an update screen function. So what I want to filter is the state, the state choice, and then I want to update the screen with something. So for right now, we're going to focus on the filter function and then later on we'll create the, the update screen function. So I'm going to go to show blocks and I'm going to create two functions or a filter function. And this has no parameters, but I'm going to change that in a bit. And the update screen. So the functions are created and they're used here, but they're empty. They don't actually do anything yet. So now we're going to make that change. So my filter function, I want it to take in two variables. I want it to take in the state choice and the race choice. This is what my filter function should look like. I want to take in the state input and the race input. And then once I get those two things, I want to do something with it. So what I'm going to do here is say get text. I'm going to get the text of what the user puts in, right? So I'll get the text of the state choice. And I'll get the text of the race choice. Okay, so two things that I want to put into my filter function. So these again are two variables. This is my first variable, which is the state choice. This is my second variable, which is the race choice. And the user gets to determine what state and what race they want to look at. So these two variables will be passed in and we're going to manipulate them here. So our filter function, I'm going to use the same list filter pattern so that's going to start off with a for loop and then inside the for loop we're going to have an if statement that's the list filter pattern okay so for the for loop we always have var i i'm going to start at the beginning of the list and go to the end of the list where i equals zero var no sorry i less than and the question now is what list are we using so first we're looking at the state input and that's going to correlate with the state or region um, variable. So that's the, that's the list that I want to use, the state or region list. So I'll do state or region. And then we'll do I++. Plus plus. And then we are going to modify our if statement. So what I'm going to do is say if the user picks a state, and we're going to loop through the state or region list. And if whatever the user picks, if that's equal to a state in the region, or if that's equal to a state in the list, then we're going to do something. So I'm going to say if this input, which is the same thing as this, so if the state input is equal to state or region, right a, uh, uh, an element in the state or region list or a state in the state or region list as soon as those things are equal then we're going to do some modification so now we need to create a filtered state or region list and we actually need to create um, a filtered race list and a filtered population list so even before we can finish our if statement let's go up here and 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 do that so i'm going to do var filtered state or region. Let's make that empty for now. 
var filtered race empty var filtered population I'll make that empty and now we're going to populate these lists so if the input is equal to some element in the state or region list then I want to append the item to the filtered state or region and I want to add that state input and I'm going to do the same for race and the same for population filtered race I'm going to add in that race input and I'm also going to do that with population. However, there is no population input, so I need to go ahead and create that, right? I need to figure out how I'm going, going to get the population input per race. So that's an, an additional function or helper function that I need to create. Some way to get the population per race and based on the race we're going to enter we're going to add that population to the filtered list so i want a, a, a function that's called get race population and i'm going to put in the race input as my variable um, i'm going to have it return as a list so that way I can get an element in that list. Okay, so I'll have the user put in a race. And based on the race, we're going to return the population. Okay, so let me create the, the let me create the function so that it may make a little bit more sense. All right, so I'm going to drag this over and this is going to be called get race population and my input is going to be race input okay so these are the races that we're working with and what I want to do is if the user selects white over here then I want to return the white list if they select black or African American I want to return the blacks list okay and whatever is in that list will get added to the filtered population. Okay? Because remember that these lists have the population per race. So this is only going to contain the number of black people that are incarcerated. This will only contain the number of white people that are incarcerated. So that's basically what we're trying to get from this function. So we need to create several if statements, if and if else statements. So I'll start off with the first one. So I'll say if race input equals white. So if the user puts white in here, which means if the user selects white here, which means if the user picks white from here, then I'm going to return the whites list. Okay, the whites list is here. So I'm going to copy this and then I'll put else if, if the race is black or African American. And remember, we're using these abbreviated variable names so that we don't end up typing very long variable names like a little shortcut for us so the next one we have um, is American Indian and Alaska Native Indians else we have Asians next Copy and paste. We have Native American, nope, Native Hawaiian, 
Can I just copy it from somewhere? Yes, I can. I can copy it from here. I just love copying and pasting. This simplifies things. All right. So here we're going to return Pacifics. And we'll add another else if. What's the last one? Hispanic or Latino? Hispanics. And then if the user picks, so let me run this. If the user picks all, then I just want it to return the total, which would be this list. So else return total okay so whenever you call this function and the user picks their race it's going to return the appropriate list based on the race all right if they pick all it's going to return the total population so looks like i have a typo here so let's just go ahead and fix that okay so our filters work, or our filters appear as if they work. Now what we have to do is create the update screen function so that we can test and see if things work as we expect. I'm gonna put in some console.logs so that we can test out this function. So I'm gonna do console.log filtered state or region. Just to see if it works. So let's run this. I'm going to pick United States. And the filter state is empty. Let's see, Alaska, Colorado, that's also empty. Hmm. Oh, I see the problem. So this needs to be the state or region dot length. So we're looking at the length of the list. So let's reset and try that again. So let's pick US, great. So we get US back, Arizona, we get US, we get Arizona. So I'm seeing so an error here. It's, it keeps repeating, which means we're, we're not emptying the list. So one other um, function that we have to add is a reset list. So basically when they click on Arizona, I just wanna see Arizona only. When they click on Colorado, I just wanna see Colorado only. That's basically what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to create a new function and nothing's wrong with creating these helper functions, right? They're there to make your coding a little bit easier. I'm going to call it reset list. And we're basically just going to do this exact same thing up here. It's just that here we don't need the vars because we've already declared these variables. So there's no need to declare them again. They've already been declared and just make them empty. And then here, every time someone clicks on a state or region, it's going to go to the filter function. And I just want to reset the list. All right. So I'm calling this function right here. So let's reset and run again. And we're going to pick Alabama. Great. Now, when I pick Arizona, I just want to see Arizona. I don't want to see Alabama, Arizona. So let's click Arizona. Perfect. This is exactly what we want to see. So anytime someone clicks on the list, that's the output. Great. Now let's modify our outputs, which is going to be the update screen. So I'm also going to have the update screen take in some parameters. And I want the update screen to only show me what we filtered on. So I'm going to have it take in the filtered Actually, let's copy and paste. Taking the filtered state or region, the filtered race, and the filtered population. And this is gonna be the state filter, the race filter, the pop filter, and I'm going to have the, the var, I'm going to declare a new variable called text output. And I'm going to say 
the state is going to be equal to state filter. Then we'll have a new line and then we'll have the race. That's going to be equal to the race filter. And then we'll have another new line and we'll have the population is going to be equal to the pop filter. And actually, this is going to be the incarcerated population. Incarcerated. Incarcerated. Wow, spelling is not my strong suit today, is it? Okay, let's do set text. I'm going to set the text to be the output and I'm going to put in the text output variable that we just declared and created. So the set text, basically we have an ID, a text error with the ID output. The set text is going to say, put this text output into this output area. All right, so now I'm going to take out this console.log. I'm gonna run this, let's reset and run. If I pick United States, okay, great. It's by default filtering on all, which is okay. That's great. Actually, let's verify this is correct. So we have 226-3602 for U United States. And this is the number that we have here, 226-3602, great. And if we filter by race, let's say white, we created an uneventful for the state, but we did not create an uneventful for the race. Rookie mistake here, rookie mistake. So let's go ahead and create our uneventful filter for the race, and it's gonna be the exact same thing. So whenever someone filters, whenever someone chooses a state, we want it to go through the filtering. When someone chooses a race, we want it to go through the exact same filtering. So now everything should work as intended. So if I pick United States, it's going to give me the total number, which we verified here is correct. So that's the total number of people that are incarcerated. And if we pick white, it's going to modify that number. All right, so this is 1139749. And if I go here under white, it's 1139749. Let's just try a few more. Black, 897.875. 897.875. Asian 2263602. Oh, we have something wrong here. Let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, so here we're saying put in Asians, and here we're saying put in Asian. So I think we need to have it be Asian and not Asians. And let's reset this and run it again. Let's try Asian again. Yep, now it's correct. 16928. Let's go over here. We have 16928. Now we got to try the native Hawaiian. Okay, 5494. 5494. And let's try Hispanics. Should be 419509. Hispanic, 419509. Perfect. So everything works as expected. So we just looked at United States. So I'm going to randomly just choose a couple of other places just to make sure our code works. So let's say I pick District of Columbia and I want to do Black or African American. That's 3146. If I go over here, District of Columbia, Black or African American, 3146. So that number looks correct. And if I do Colorado and let's pick Hispanic, 13296. Colorado, let's see, Hispanic, 13296. So it looks like our code is working as expected. And anytime someone changes a state, it updates. When someone changes the race, it also updates. 
So this is looking really good. We've also compared it with the actual data set. Let's make sure that the numbers are displaying correctly. So just to recap what we did here, we declared some variables, right? We're, we're grabbing the information from our data set. We also grabbed, or we also created some filtered variables that we're gonna that we populate later on in the code. Then we have our uneventes, state choice and race choice. So whenever someone chooses a state, something happens. Whenever someone chooses a race, something also happens. We have our filter and our update screen function. Down here in our filtered function, first we reset the list so that we don't keep getting repeated data every, every time someone changes a state or a race. Then we're going to look through the state or region list. If the input that the user puts in for the state is equal to some state in the state or region list, then we want to populate those filtered lists. Down here, we're just making those filtered lists empty. Again, this is just to reset the list. Then down here, we're trying to get the population depending on what the user inputs. So if they select black or African American, then we need to return the population of black people who are incarcerated. If they choose Hispanic, then we need to return the list of Hispanic people who are incar incarcerated. So here we use some return values. And then down here, we're just updating the screen, which is updating the text output. So we're saying we're, we're, we're taking in these filtered lists and we're basically just, pop, just displaying them on the screen, right? The state filter, the race filter, and the population filter. So the only other thing that's left to do is to add some comments, right? We need to add some comments just to make sure that it lines up with the requirements. So for our filter function, we're going to have our parameters. Yes, you get input user choice of state and race. No return values. Reset list. This makes the filtered lists empty so we don't get repeated choices every time the user changes the input. Then we get want the race population, get the population of Get, okay, gets the incarcerated in popu incarcerated population based on race. And then we also have a return value. It's returning a list, which is the population of the incarcerated race based on race that the user chooses. And the update screen displays the filtered lists on the screen. Or displays the contents of the filtered list on the screen. All right, so every function has um, a comment and we are pretty much done. Now we're good to, we've already tested it, make sure everything works, added our comments. Now we're good to submit. And then if you're doing an additional set of tasks with College Board, you need to make your digital portfolio. You also need to make your PDF. You could copy and paste this into a Word file and save it as a PDF, or you could use the options that they've given to you, like using Code Print or GitHub Gist. And then from there, you'll have to create a video. You could use your phone and record it, right? Record yourself clicking through. Let's go back to part three. Yeah. So you want to record this section of your screen, All right? When you run it, record yourself clicking on a state, clicking on a race, trying out different states and different races. Just record that with your phone and you can add that to your submission. Or, of course, you can use the options that they've given to you down here with Screencast or Snagit. And that's it, that's it, you are done. And just to make sure that we meet the requirements, right? 
we need to make sure that we have instructions for input from well for us we're using a user so we're getting we're, we have the instructions here choose a state choose a race and then we are using at least one list actually we're using several different lists here we're using a data set and we're grabbing the columns as lists we have the procedure name the return type if necessary one or more parameters yes we have that we have different procedure names like filter reset list get race population update screen um, all of them except filtered lists use parameters some of them use two parameters the only one that uses return values is the get race population and then we have we definitely have things set up in order right looking at our filter um, function things are set up in order we do the for loop first do the if statement we also have selection through our if statement we have iteration through our for loop we have calls to our student developed procedure which means we have calls to our functions so wherever we create the filter functions it's called here in our on events we also create our reset list is called here in our filtered function we created the get race population it's called here in our filtered function we also have an update screen and it's called up here in our filtered sorry in our on events Let's see, and then we have instructions for output based on input and program functionality. And really that's here, right? Every time we run it, we pick a state, pick a race, our output displays here. And that's it. So we are all set. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something from this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.